Jenny, my girl, look at your beautiful. I I put this red on for you. This on for you because it felt like the most chic outfit that I have, but I'm super sweaty because I don't wear long sleeves. And now I'm like, I'm so glad that you can't see like the stains. Do you want to change your, <laughs> oh, everyone's. <laughs> right I just start yeah I do I know do you want to do. Do slip into something more comfortable, comfortable. perhaps <laughs> I do have I have a, like a giant glass of ice here so if my I have a start. big thing that's full of mostly ice and water I mean this menopause is no joke <laughs> I don't okay I am having all of the hot flashes, all of the issues, all of the, and then I went to go see my gynecologist for the first time in <clears throat> decade. And, um, and she was like, first of all, I don't even know who you are. And number two, I just did a test. You're not having menopause. What the fuck? What is this? Oh, is it perimenopause? Like that thing that no one can define ever. Perimenopause. Fucking torturing us. Oh my God. I don't know. But it is the worst. And it it's ugh. Okay, let me tell you what I tried that worked. Secret clinical. I'm using that right now. It's literally in the I just bought some. (laughs) Does it make your armpits itchy though? Yes. (laughs) It does. And, And I get like a little rash. And Mm -hmm. every single time, and I'm like, but it's the only thing that really, really works. Correct. Yeah. Correct. I got to a point where, girl, and you know, I love a fancy soap situation. I had to revert to using dial. Like, I my I was so stinky and so sweaty all the time that I was like fuck this I gotta go back to dial no glamorous okay someone says we should try loom great we'll try that okay but like the dial I don't know I was like it this has been the first like year of my life that I was like oh no there is really bacteria in my armpits like (laughs) what I do they smell like that yes and it's because I'm sweating and hot it's the teen years all over again it's just you're it's like a new puberty and it super sucks I'm not a fan of it no Um, my my uh, uh gynecologist was like you know what I think it is I think uh I think your your testosterone's all fucked up and I was like, I don't think I'm supposed to have testosterone. She's like, everybody has testosterone. How do you not understand hormones? I was like, I don't, I don't know. Um, to med- so- medical school, you need to understand yeah. hormones, not she me. Barely graduated. Uh, so she was like, what, what we can do is we can uh, cut a little hole and there's like a little pocket and we can put a pill in your butthole, but like the, not your, you're not in your butthole, you're like they cut a hole in your butt and then they put little pills in there and then they dissolve over the mu- You know what? I just realized- you, What do they do? Oh. What do the pills do? <laughs> you told us all the good parts. Now, what do the I, pills Okay, do? well, I, I will, I will. But for, but first, um, Elizabeth has reminded me that we haven't actually started this. Oh. Uh, and I should say, hello, everyone. Hi, everybody. <laughs> How are you? Everybody's like, we're already tired of hearing about your disgusting swamp pits. Terrible bodies. Um, so welcome. We will get right back to testosterone buttholes. Um, welcome to everyone and welcome especially to Samantha Irby. Oops. This is talking to you. I mean, I only write books so I can talk to you. That's about them. I mean, I figured. I figured. Although we don't even have to talk about we just talk about some dumb shit. It doesn't matter. Like our armpits. I mean, literally, here's the thing is we are going to because so if you're listening to this, um, all the books have been sent out, but I know a lot of people do media mail, it takes a little longer and everything. So some of you may have had the chance to already read it. Some of you may have just arrived, some of you you may be get, seeing that thing in your mail that goes, it's coming. 
Um, so, so we're going to talk a little bit about, about the book, but we're also going to just do a bunch of, I have the most bizarro questions oh. um, because I was like, no one else is going to be able to answer these questions. I'll answer Ooh. all of them. Uh, okay. So anyway, uh, so she was like, yeah, we put, we put the pocket in your butt. We do the whatever. Um, and I was like, that sounds like something I don't want to do. And she was like, well, we have, there's also this cream that we can make that witches make. And, um, and it's, you have to go to an apothecary and it's not covered by insurance. And, uh, and I was like, that is 100% up my alley. Yes. Yes. Uh, the, the unregulated witch cream, you do that. <laughs> and, and she was like, okay. That's so our band name, unregulated witch cream. I'm going to pay, I'm going to play the triangle. What will you play? The piano. I know you how. You really play the piano? Yeah. Fucker. You're really know. classy. I, you know what? I had a mom who had three disappointing bitches in the seventies, sixties. <laughs> I don't know. My sisters are 20 years older than I am. Thereabouts. Yeah. Sixties, seventies. And then in the 1980s, she was like, God, I got to have another kid before my uterus jumps out of my body to make up for these morons I gave birth to so then she had me and like she was a teenager when she had them right so it was just like trying to survive <laughs> but then I came along and she was like we're gonna give you piano lessons and we're gonna take you to the ice rink so you can be in the nutcracker yeah, when I was little, she did all, she really was trying to make me into a different person than my sisters. And fortunately for the universe, I am. Oh my God. I love that. Oh, thank you. You know time. what's crazy? If I wanted kids, I feel like that's a way to do it is to start early, see what you get. And then when you're like, this is my kid. To, to have another one and then be like okay yeah. I spanked that one I didn't make that one do sports I didn't make that one learn how to pay, play the flute I'm doing that with this <laughs> uh, so here's what we should do is do you have a keyboard because can you musically accompany this well, I don't have a key we have an actual piano downstairs I'm that kind of is it a baby oh my god is it a white baby grand <laughs> no if I had one of those it would be the centerpiece of my living room you know that we I'd eat it'd be in the dining room we'd be eating dinner off it me and you you'd be here yes. we'd be eating lean cuisines off my baby grand. <laughs> god we could do that thing where you dump the spaghetti on the top of it and you eat it with the you're like oh, I don't know what we're doing right. now right um, okay or nacho nachos might be good for that too oh, that would be good mm -hmm. okay your next book we are doing with the piano it's going to be a musical review review yes okay all right yes. I've, already got, I've already got plans I'm going to forget this within 15 minutes so you're gonna have to remind me don't worry several people will remember I see everybody's writing this down right Wait. Can't wait for someone to email me a year from now or two years from now, and I have zero recollection. Yes. About. Oh, oh, I will say, um, keep using the chat. But if you have questions, we will get to questions. Um, so in the Q and A, uh, you can write all your questions, and then in the end, if we if we don't, if we uh, they better be good. Questions. Just saying it's gonna be hard to follow I gotta say the questions that I have um and and I have a lot of like actual real sort of questions but I say we just jump into you know the ridiculous yes uh, so one of the things that I uh, and this actually does have to do with your book oh my god look at this I'm a good interviewer um you talked about you idiot your, your, your Starbucks order um, and I have never related more. Actually, I have because anxiety shit on the side of the road. I related a little more than that. But the anxiety of, of the Starbucks order. Tell me your Starbucks order. 
Okay. It's simple because I'm deathly afraid of anyone overhearing anything I do that sounds bad. So I either, I have a couple things I like. The most complicated is a lemonade green tea with mango base, like their mango stuff that they have and a little sweetened. That That's like my summer drink. And in the winter, I like a chai latte, a venti chai latte with soy or oat milk. They're always out of oat milk, always out of oat milk. So like I usually get the soy because they have it. And because I'm a big baby, the soy is a little sweet and anything a little sweet <laughs> I will, I will die. I'm like, oh, there's there's sugar in that arsenic. <laughs> that sugar will kill you. Do, yeah, have you seen the um I'm gonna say the Instagram, but it was actually a TikTok, but I wait until because I'm old, I wait until the TikToks oh, go to Instagram. Yeah, uh -huh, okay. that is what I do. Okay, good. Um, but the the Instagram where the the boys are telling their grandpa what to order and they're or they're like. I want a, a frate mocha ye ye and a and a, a venti pinkity drinkity and it is the most. I love it so much. I'm and now I want to. I just want to order that every time. I want to say it, and they're not going to get it, and they're going to be like, I, or they're going to be. I fucking heard that thirty times just today. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. It's so yeah. good. It's so good for lunch. I gotta find that. Oh, it's very. I'll send it to you. Yes, I'll send it to you. me. Me, and um, then I'll send you the type of shit that I look at on Instagram and you'll be like, stop. What is it? Nothing bad. I just, I love memes. I, I look at too many terrible memes, but <laughs> I don't know how, but I ended up in a cycle of, oh, I, I can only describe it as weird shit happening to kids. Not yeah. bad, but like I I fell off my skateboard. I can't do the ones where it's like, you know, somebody actually gets hurt. So it's like the, the very tepid in between. The other day I watched maybe 30 times in a row. This, there was an ice, there a ice water challenge or something where someone in the back seat has to hold a bunch of waters and with no lids. And then they go over bumps that it, if when you see me lurking online at two o'clock in the morning, that is what I'm doing. Being okay. a creep and watching pranks. go. <laughs> I know exactly that video. I have it saved on my phone. Um, oh so Haley gets on mine and they have a real weird sense of humor, it, like weird in a different way of me, uh -oh. but, it, but it picks up their algorithm. And so it is a constant, like a guy, you know, pulls up to Starbucks and orders a drink and then takes off the lid and goes, thanks. And then smashes the whole thing in his face and then asks for a straw or, you know, people just covered in whipped cream for no reason whatsoever doing Hamlet. So many capybara videos, things that oh, I don't God. understand. And I have to go, mm -hmm. what does this mean? And they're like, well, and here's the really embarrassing ones. The ones that are like sexual but I don't get the joke. And, I, and then my Ooh, and then your kid has to explain a weird sex thing yes. to you. Yes. No. I was, this is not funny. And here's the thing is they like these things that are not funny, but they think it's funny that it's not funny. And so I'm like, oh, look, this is because of you, another one of those. And Haley's like, no, that's really funny. I'm like, it doesn't make any sense. It's one of those surreal and Haley's like, no, mom, Jesus Christ. Do I, do you not know what squirting is? And I'm like, yeah. What? Haley, how do you know? Yeah, thank you. The how old is Haley 18, now? A grown up. They're 18. They're actually right now at college uh, new student orientation. So shut the fuck up. Congratulations. Uh, thank you. I'm exhausted and I hate it. <laughs> Where are they going? Texas State University. Right. All right. All right. 
state school. Oh, it's your right. turn. Uh, that's, that's right. Yeah, that those are my favorite uh, words to hear. State school. <laughs> Oh my God, me too. Oh, oh my God, the best. Okay, so real questions. So you write for TV a lot and I watch everything that you do, even things that I didn't necessarily watch before, like Sex in the City. I'd seen a couple of them, but I was like, you're doing sex? Okay, so I watched the whole, I had to go back and figure out like, who are these people? And what's you going did on? Jenny Lawson. Oh, I'm a bad person. No, I, that's incredible that you went back. <laughs> that's amazing. But here, so here's my question. What yes. TV show would you want to be in? Okay, what TV show would I want to be in? Oh my God. Okay. Probably, and I'm not just saying this because it just ended, but probably Succession, but as a character who's like, remember when Roman had that hot, tall girlfriend who was just funny? Yeah. I want to be like that. Like, I don't care about business, but I do have a bod for sin. So I, <laughs> so I would want to be like the fun girlfriend that Logan wants him to break up with because because I'm black. He's like, mm, are you going to have kids with that lesbian looking black lady? You know what I mean? He would say something fucked up. Um, but, I, <laughs> but their lives are so opulent. Oh my God. Can you imagine just like, Okay, so one of my things that I pay too much attention to, there's this Instagram that's like out succession fashion something. Anyway, this amazing person figures out what the characters are wearing. And it truly is like a shirt that looks like this, right? But it's like, that's by, you know poochie gucci and you're like whoa and then to list the price and it's like seven thousand dollars but it's just a shirt and i'm like can you imagine your casual throw-on shirt costing thousands of dollars it feels too stressful for life but i would like to experience it in a tv show capacity None where they're like if you have pets, I think that's what teaches you not to care about clothes. Correct. I would get my clothes out of a dumpster because the cat's just going to make them look like, uh, I want you to know that before we joined, I had to vomit, <laughs> vomit. I had to vacuum cat vomit off my chair. <laughs> I wish I could pick up my rug because there's cat vomit on it right now because it happened right before we got on and I was just like, I'll just pretend that's not there. They know, they know, they, do. they know. Oh my They're God. Like, oh, you need to sit in this chair and pretend to be important today. Blah. I'm like, okay. This, this chair especially is such a wreck. I need to just dye it black because it is 8 million different. And I just want to tell people like, that's not pee. Like it's not just pee. It's probably some, some is pee. But there, but it's everywhere. There's spots all over. And I want to be like, I'm not just like moving and peeing in different places. Like it's, it's every time that I clean it, it just makes a different spot. And it's, yeah. It's too much. It's too much to get after. It's hard. It really is. It's it really hard. is. Uh, somebody really told is. me that, um, that if you want to look, if you want to look like you're wealthy, you get nice shoes a nice coat and a nice purse and then you can wear anything you want but I don't have any of those things <laughs> yeah. but, I, but I, like the idea that, I like the idea that 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 is an entry that you can be like wait okay. but do you just not take them off like do you go to the function and you're in your coat all night and they're like hey Jenny it's a uh, we set the heat at 92 <laughs> what are you feeling like, sick I've never and you're had like, menopause you're like oh. Yeah, it's just 
Don't this I look like this coat? coat? I'm gonna pass out. So forgive me. This is fine. I'm just gonna put put ice down. My, oh, that. Actually don't don't pretty. you love my coat though? It's really good, huh? It's very chic. <laughs> Here's the other, now there are going to be more spots because I literally did really just pour ice down my shirt. And so it's just going to go through. I give up. Right. Um, but, but no, here's what I think what it is, is if you're, if you want to look wealthy, you're never going to stay at a party. You're just going to show up and you're going to go, oh, I'm so busy. I'm so sorry. I'm double booked and I've got to go to this other thing in someplace where you wear coats. I don't know. It's hot here. We don't own coats. I know. See, that's hard here. I mean, I'm in Michigan. I could get away with that. Like until April, Ugh. I could wear a coat and then put it right back on in September. That's what you need. Don't let the cats near it. <sighs> they get into everything. They do. They like climb up on shit and get into closets. The they like to have developed thumbs and pop the closet open. And I'm like, you know what? If it meant that much to you that you had to turn your cat finger into a thumb, fine. Just do your worst. Ferris Mueller literally has thumbs. He's polydactyl. And so we had to change every fucking door in this house because he would open. You you try to go to the bathroom. You Say you're a guest in my house and you, you want to go poop. Guess what? You're going to just hear this. It's going to sound like I'm trying to get in there to watch you. And I have to be like, it's not me. You have privacy. I'm sorry. Ferris Mueller wants to watch you. Don't, you don't have to let him in, but you hear it. And I, and I always have to tell people lock it, lock it because he will, he will open it right. And just push right in. It's bad. It's He's bad. very cute, but not that cute. Is anyone? No, no one. <laughs> None of them are. Okay, so do you have a, wait, I was going to ask another question first. Let's go back. No spoilers, but who were you rooting for to, to win Succession without any spoilers in case anybody hasn't seen the last one? Who was your person? Well, I, from the beginning, and maybe this will tell you a lot about my personality. I root I was rooting for Kendall from the jump yeah because he's just so like I know you shouldn't root for a pathetic person to have a good job but, <laughs> but his you know what I like optimistic people because I am not so when someone is just like, yeah, and I got this idea about this and I got this crazy plan and I got, then I'm like, oh, look at him. He really believes it. You know, like he believes in himself. You know what I mean? Like that will happen to me. So, I mean, the only thing I was actually rooting for in that show is for Roman and Jerry to have sex. Yes. Oh my God. That was my number one. Every the single fact episode. that they did not get even a proper goodbye, uh, according to how I think, it feels like a crime, Jenny. It feels like they committed a crime against me. I am. I am one hundred percent, one hundred percent with you. Um, I went, Victor's actually probably watching this in the other room with Dorothy Barker and he's probably like, oh, another, now that's my girl, little Dorothy right? Barker. I love her. Baby. Uh, okay. Wait, but what was the other question I was going to go? Oh, do you have a secret talent? Um, well, playing the piano was a secret from you, but other people. <laughs> I have a bad memory. I'm going to forget that in a year. Good. Be, so then. Piano? Good. So then when your next book comes out or mine comes out and we talk again, I'm going to be like, oh my God, you know what my deepest secret is? I play the piano. <laughs> um, like the you're going to be like, oh my God, do you have a white baby grand? And I'm going to say, yeah, I eat nachos off it all the time. Okay. Secret talent. The problem is I'm very loud about things I'm good at. Okay, here is one. 
that I never talk about. I'm very good at crossword puzzles. Like the, like New, the York New York puzzle? Times puzzle. How fast do you do it? Now, uh, usually between five and eight minutes on an easy day. Not on like Saturday. That is insane. Like on a Monday. It's eight minutes is a long time. And you finish the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't, I try not to stop until it tells me hooray. I was doing one yesterday and I, it was, they were like one letter is off and I'm like, and I did give one run through to see if I could find it and I didn't I'm so disappointed in you (laughs) please that's why I'm not telling you until now I didn't want you to cancel this I I have never here's the other thing I've never done an electronic um crossword puzzle I just do the like the written ones and so I didn't know that it told you if you got a letter wrong so now I'm maybe a little less jealous because I, I don't think I've ever finished one without having to get help in my entire life. Oh, wait, you want to see what I actually, how psychotic I actually am. Yes. This just happens to be right here. This is my real true love where you just get a blank grid and a list of words and you have to figure out how to fit all the words into a blank grid. So when did you decide that you hate yourself? (laughs) As a kid, my mom had fill in puzzles all the time. I was like, "Mm, that's hard. And then she's like, no, you just figure out a corner and the rest really flows. Mm. And I'm like, uh, I still, it doesn't happen that quickly and naturally for me, but I do like it. Oh my gosh. I'm really good at, uh, what is it? Word search. Man, oh, I'm so good yeah. at, oh, I just like look at it and I'm like, oh, I found all of them. Yeah. That word searches up. are incredibly, I'm going to send you, I have this app that's all word searches and they, my favorite thing about it is they are grouped. So it's like, do you want to do a kitchen tool word search? Do you want to do a gardening word search? This word search is all about hot dogs. You know what I mean? Incredible. Incredible. Do you do the wordles and the quartles and the... You know, Uh, now wordle, I am not that smart. (laughs) So much maybe that's my secret untalent is that the wordle frustrates the shit out of me and you know what I do this is how you know like the crossword shit is a fluke that I'm really an actual idiot so you know how like you put the wrong word in like you put in penis and then it's like there's a p but it's in the wrong place and no e n or s my Mm -hmm. next two guesses will have e n and s and like no p and then i like pull back from the phone and i'm like oh no no, no. i am actually stupid (laughs) they told me not to use those letters and i said if it's earns and it's like no it isn't. They told you there's no E, N, or S. And where's the P? So I can't. I can't. It makes me. So my wife had uh, surgery and I was in the waiting room with her parents for uh, 27 hours. <laughs> it felt like. And they are very nice people. They're both retired. And they do the wordle together, which is like, so each on their phones. And then I looked over and Kirsten's dad is like working it out like a math problem on a piece of paper. He's like, his phone is down and he's like writing out words. Like a Sudoku and a Wordle at the same 
Yeah, he really is. He used to be a, a principal, like a school principal. So clearly he loves a method and a lesson. And I'm like, because he doesn't want to waste his tries. Oh my gosh, I love it. And I'm I, like, if like, I, I ever had to, penis. I would never pull out an analog sheet of paper and a pencil to do something on my phone. That feels like against the laws of nature. <laughs> well, I'm glad. Oh my God, somebody said Wordle math. I've been there. Mm -hmm. I, it's, I don't have the page. I do the New York Times spelling bee every day and mm -hmm. I do the crossword, but then most everything else, I'm, I'm like a toddler. I just am like, too hard. And then I <laughs> throw my phone across. <laughs> well, so before we started, this is what a, what a terrible hostess I am is before we started, I was like, how's your wife? And then I was like, wait, no, don't tell me. Well, I'll wait because I know people are going to want to ask. And then I totally fucking never asked it. How is your wife? God damn, she I'm the worst. is right. She had a tumor the size of, and this is not, not even a joke, like a mini basketball. Like it was like 16 centimeters in diameter. It was trapped between her stomach and her spleen. And it was, it had all these veins and it, it, it was so big that it had redirected the blood flow. Also, oh my God, how could I forget the scariest thing? It was attached to her pancreas. Oh my God, that's bad. Yeah. Yeah. I should have led with that. Like what a piece of shit. I'm like, anyway, it looked like a softball, by the way, it was on her pancreas. So um, we, we started this like, I don't need process a while ago we saw an oncologist here and he was like uh, you know you can watch it then she sent it to her brother-in-law whose father is a radiologist he looked at it and was like go to the specialist right now so we went to the University of Michigan I mean she had a bunch of ultrasounds we went to the University of Michigan we saw a doctor there who was like yeah, anything over three centimeters we take out. So this 16 centimeter bad boy is coming out. And so it's, we've had to learn a lot in a short period of time, but they, they got it out in one piece. I will text you the picture. I already know you oh want God, it. Please do. Please do. They, <laughs> they took it out in one piece. They all, they had to take her spleen because they were smashed together. I mean, you don't need it, so that's good. Get it yeah. out and pop. Oh, but let me tell you. Okay, in one second, I'm going to tell you something about the spleen that I don't understand, but I'm going to tell you anyway. Uh, and then she only lost forty percent of her pancreas, which is wow, incredible. Is Pathology really is not back yet, so we don't okay. really know. But he was like. There's no way it grew this big and it's cancer. So, but you know, they can't guarantee. So we'll wait for the pathology. But the thing about the spleen, I don't know how or why, but when you don't have a spleen, it like messes up your vaccines. And what? I'm talking like childhood vaccines. So she's, she, before the surgery, she had to get a bunch of like, rubella just like regular vaccines and for the rest of her life she'll have to get vaccines updated that people with spleens don't so I don't know what the spleen does I'm not going to read a book to find it out but <laughs> just know that if you don't have yours then you have to get extra vaccines I didn't know that at all yeah oh my god Goodness. Yeah, it like has a lot to do with your immune system. So my, my mom, when I was, I think 16 or so, we didn't have insurance. And so mm -hmm. like, you know, if you don't have insurance, you don't get stuff checked up and everything. Yeah. And That's why I didn't it. find out I had Crohn's disease last 28. <laughs> yes. Yes. So she, she went in cause she was like, I think maybe I have a hernia. And they were like, yeah, probably, but it costs money to like do the x-rays and everything. So they're like, we'll just go in and just sew it up. And 
and they went in to sew it up and they were like, she had a cantaloupe sized, it was the same thing, cantaloupe sized uh, tumor. And, the, and they took it out and they were like, and it also tons of veins and it was on stuff and whatever. And they said the same thing. They were like, if it grew that fast, it's a, a very good sign. And so, yeah, so all the fingers crossed, but thank I, I you agree with the doctor. I, I, if you needed a second opinion. Thank you, Dr. Lawson. I'm giving, I'm giving my positive, my positive thoughts. You can't sue me later, but um, yeah, my, my positive thoughts are. We came she was supposed to be she they told us she could be in the hospital from five to 14 days which is 14 is so many you know what I mean like it it really is so many but we got to come home on the sixth day which was Saturday um the Lord said let them go home and so we (laughs) We went home. My friend Carl, who um, runs the emergency medical system at Harvard, flew in. So he's been here, like, taking care of her. She has a big drain, which, girl, you know I'm not touching. Uh, <laughs> it's fascinating, though. I would totally do it. I would be like, come in. Let's do it. Let's suction it out. I did learn how to strip the line, and I was like, no this is why I didn't go into medicine (laughs) this is why I make jokes and I don't help anyone do anything because I can feel my hands getting weak (laughs) like we she's like then you strip the you pull the solids and I'm like you pull the what (laughs) so and let me yeah she's doing she's doing all right there's a smell yeah. associated. Oh, come nobody warns on. You. Nobody warns you. Yep. But thank goodness that she's she's doing well. You know, when, when my mom had hers removed, I was like, do you think maybe it was a silent twin and it just started to grow and it was like in a takeover? And, uh, and the doctor was like, that's not how that works. But in my head, I, I was always like, maybe, maybe that was my- I other. was really hoping it would have hair and teeth. Yes, yes. Oh. I mean, we haven't gotten the pathology back yet, so there's still a chance. Right? There could still be. What if she ate her own twin, but then her twin started to get repowered? Yep. It's not just a Stephen King book. Well, it is a Stephen King book, but it's also. What's really happening in my house right now? Exactly. Yeah, (laughs) duh. Um, okay, so the next extremely serious question after this extremely serious thing, have you mm-hmm. ever seen your doppelganger or do you have a doppelganger? I don't think so. I mean, does Forrest Whitaker count? <laughs> no. Uh <laughs> Like, fuck really? my own shit up making that dumbass joke um I don't think so I think if I had I would go up to them and just be like I'm so sorry <laughs> your life is hard huh <laughs> Wait, I mean, you do have you really- have one yeah, actually you look like this woman Valerie Shane I worked with for a long time I'm gonna I'm gonna get a picture of her because but when I see you I think of her and I'm just like oh my my friends oh I like that she was nice yeah oh totally and she has the same glasses you wear your hair the same love it I uh I, I have I have that that face I guess that looks like a lot of people but I had in college there was a girl who looked so much like me that people would constantly come up to me and talk to me and and they absolutely thought that she was me and then one time I ended up staying at this person's house um because we couldn't afford a hotel and I was with some friends and I that girl whose name was Jen by the way which is way too close because people would come and say hey Jen and I would I would be like hi I don't I'm Jenny I don't really like it people call me Jen whatever um and then it would be a little later when they would be like, can I have a cigarette? And I'm like, I don't smoke. I'm like, oh, you, you like the other person. That's not me. But oh my God, that out, is a trip. Yes, but the girl, uh, my doppelganger slept with the husband of the girl that we were with 
And she absolutely was convinced it was me. So the entire time I was staying at her house, she was just giving me the stink eye and I couldn't figure out why. It wasn't until we left. Man. Was like, because you slept with her husband. I was like, I've slept with one person in my life and it was not that guy. Anyway. You know, I was about to ask, did she have a fine man that you could pull a single white female? <laughs> Nobody wanted this guy. Nobody That's the movie that. I want to be in. <laughs> oh, that would be a good one. Oh, that would be a good one. Uh, yeah. like, oh, as the as the Jennifer, whatever her name is, character, oh. not Bridget Fonda. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I want to be one. the freak. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just make sure we're on the same page with oh, that. Oh, yeah. Oh, I had no doubt. No doubt whatsoever that we're going to pick crazy. We're going to be like, and maybe the most entertaining crazy? Yes. Can. <laughs> I mean, we're already, I'm already there. I know your ass is crazy too. Oh, so yeah. we're already there. Let's 100%. just lean in and put it on film. <laughs> and the, and, and what is one, this is my last question that I'm going to ask you, and then we're going to go to the Q&As because there's good ones in there. What, it, but this, very serious. What is the one thing that everyone has done, but you haven't? Oh my God, this is an incredible question. One thing that everyone has done, but I haven't. Oh, everything I'm thinking of is like stuff that there are people who don't do. Like I was going to say ski, but lots of people don't ski. Um, I have, I don't do anything. I have never taken a walk on the beach. Are you kidding me? No. It's awful. How have you missed it? <laughs> because I know it sucks. I've, I mean, I grew up in the Chicago suburbs. We uh, would see the lake every day. I have been on the beach, but like walking and playing and laying out. No, no. Yeah. Never. You're not missing anything. You're not missing anything. Mm -mm. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, so some excellent, fantastic, wonderful questions, um, including why Judge Mathis and not Judge Judy inquiring minds want to know. Well, because a billion years ago when the show first started, it shot in Chicago. And, you know, Chicago people are insane in that we just will watch all the Chicago shit. Why do you think there have been so many Chicago fire and law or whatever there is I don't watch those but um I started watching it 20 plus years ago and he was so funny and at the time it was like who else was out Judge Wapner right and so it was like he's not that you know old mean guy like he's hip he's funny he seems cool like you could like go get a pizza with him and it would be fun then I went to a couple of tapings which cemented my love of Greg Mathis the show is so fun you get to see a million cases and he really is like a comedian like he's so fast and he's so funny so that's my past with it I have watched him load these many years and truly I was watching Judge Mathis this was when I was still on Twitter I tweeted if I wrote recaps of Judge Mathis would anyone be interested and all I need is one person I need one moron to be like yes I will yes I mean and so someone said yes, and then I started. But he really also is the best judge. Like, I know people love Jud Judge Judy, but also, let me say this. The people who come in to Judge Mathis, they're like perfect to write about. You know, he, I feel like Judge Judy gets a lot of like, you know kids who need to be yelled at by their mom or their nana and judge mathis gets like people who used to smoke rocks 
fighting over like a 1989 boombox. It's just from a recapping perspective, it's just more fun. It's a, it's Jerry Springer versus Ricky Lake. Correct. Ooh, I used to love Ricky Lake though. Me too. I watched every episode. Oh, me too. I loved her so much that I watched her birthing movie as a non birth, non ever going to give birth or make use of my uterus person. And it was scarring, but that is how much I love Ricky Lake. There was a scene, they were talking about like the best way to uh, deliver a baby is like standing, right? And there was this one woman who's doing a home birth and she's like bent at the waist, leaning on a bed and then just whatever fluid, amniotic, I don't know what comes out. A bunch of fluid comes out. It's squirting, Sam, (laughs) From, from what I've understood. From the internet, that's what that is. Really taught you. Yeah. Um, and then she just like pulls her baby out. And I was like. He does it? Yes. By the hair? And then, the they, hair? then she put the baby right on her chest because they were talking in the movie. They talk about how you should, or it's a documentary. It's on movie, but how the baby should immediately touch you. So you start to bond and they don't like the thing where the doctor takes me she pulled her baby out and held it right to her chest it was incredible that i is, can't take a shit without crying let alone pull my baby out amen i was like hats off to you bitch oh my god or incredible deal. also can i just can i just ask because you're one of the few people that i actually can ask this um if you're when you're pooping do you ever have to wash your glasses afterwards because you have little tear things all over is that yes just a, i've always wondered like yes but just, especially after puke yes you know a you thing wonder. a thing that's important to me and shouldn't be is getting realistic puking and pooping on TV. That's the only reason I want to write for TV is so I can like, you know, get some poop on there. And the biggest, I don't know if this is, I don't think this is a secret, but there's a scene in the, and just like that, Sex and the City reboot, where Carrie vomits and SJ really vomited like the 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 like thing taped to her mouth didn't work and she was just she's such a gangster she was like fuck it and she drank the solution and puked it and when you hear it you hear the real you hear the like oh oh you know, and I, I hate the like the TV, the, the like spit up vomit where yes. someone's just like, uh, and it's, baby like it's like I turn into a werewolf while vomiting, right? Like my whole body is like, Ugh! like I want to see <laughs> when I pull my head out of the toilet, I look like Teen Wolf. Put that on TV, please. Yes, so yes, glasses like, must always die. be cleaned after um, my workout is what I like to go. You <laughs> are doing the Lord's work. You I'm trying. Are... Oh my God. I, I'm trying. Uh, I'm like half the people here are like, yeah. The other half are like, what did I get into? Why did I do this? I'm sorry. Let's go to the I'm next. Sorry, question. everybody. What you thought the two of us were going to have an intelligent conversation with each other? All Jenny and I say to each other is the dumbest shit you've ever heard. Also, most of my writer friends, right? Everybody thinks like writers are like refined, and no, no, we're terrible and stupid this is how it would be if we were on the phone yes we're terrible we're stupid we're curious I think that's the thing yeah we're we're not afraid to be like do you ever when you start to throw up think this is where I die because I can't get the air in and my body's like still trying and I'm like oh this is or if it's not digested enough 
yes. girl, let me tell you about this time. Oh my God, that I had some too spicy Indian food after eating like a trough of a uh, trail mix. Mm-hmm. Getting that trail mix out of my body. I like, I wanted to put the, <laughs> what's the thing you suck the poop and the plunger. I want to put the plunger on my face to get it out. It was so awful. It was like puking up rocks. Yes. Ugh. And that's when you really think you're going to die is when you can like, you can't breathe around whatever's trying to come out. Yeah. Mm. I did that once with Doritos. They're real, Ooh. they're not good. Did it ruin the Doritos for you? Um, it ruined Cool Ranch Doritos, uh, but eventually I was able to come back around. So okay. it was better. Okay. So this question is such a good question and I'm so sorry. Can someone turn on closed captioning? I don't know how to do that. I wish I did. And can I say, I salute you because HBO Max fucked everything up and the closed captioning isn't on anymore. And so I have no idea what they were saying on succession. I was like, Victor, what did, Wait. She, what did she just say? They, what do you mean they fucked it up? They well, like there's a there the wait, are you talking about the HBO Max thing? Yeah. So so HBO Max went to Max because I guess they decided they want to also be Cinemax. It didn't make any sense. <laughs> um, but when they switched it over, now if you click it and you say, or at least on mine, when I click it and I say turn on closed captions, it says the closed captions are already on. I'm like, no, they're not. They're fucking not. And then I'm like, turn on subtitles. The subtitles for that language are already turned on. I'm like, no, they're not. So I, so, so I would pause it constantly. I would be like, what did Roman just say? Cause I know it was something really funny and terrible. Tell me what he just said. And Victor was like, damn it. I hate this so much. So I apologize. I do think that when this ends up on YouTube, the closed captions do show up. I want to say that the live closed captions is what we can't get to work um, on Zoom stuff. So you, so you should be able to, fingers crossed. Oh, yeah. On the one. Um, let's see. The uh, da, 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 um, the chapter on sex in the city was fantastic, but it oh, kind of like you. it was it was toned down a little. Like uh, maybe the hate mail and everything was just so much worse. Having to relive the trauma of the crazy white ladies with the parasocial relationships with fictional characters. Um, but did you have to back off on the details because of like big Hollywood bullshit or were they just like, you can say whatever you want? Well, okay. This is a very good question. So it was kind of a few things, which is why I chose to wrote about, write about the old show. One, the like death threats and comments and shit were like, so painful and also a thing about me is that I don't get mad about the negative comments I want to like explain what I was trying to do and that is terrible I should just say fuck you and move on but my nature is to be like oh no no but but see if you knew what I was trying you would let you know then also, I didn't want to give those people any shine. Also, I had to sign an NDA. And rather than call the business department and see what I could say versus what I couldn't say, I was like, fuck this. I'm going to write about the old show, which I did not sign an MTA for and is 25 fucking years old. Also, at the time that I wrote it, I don't think I knew that we were getting another season. And so that shit is technically still my job. So I didn't want to, like, what if I'd written some horrible thing and then I got to, like, look Cynthia Nixon in the face and be like, well, girl, you you weren't that bad. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Cynthia's amazing. But yeah, it's hard. I don't want to shit where I eat. And even if I said nothing bad, I don't want anyone to feel like, well, we can't talk around this bitch because she's going to put it in a book. 
So when when Max drops the guillotine <laughs> on us, then I'll be like, but also, but here's another thing. Sorry. See, this is what I'm doing, explaining myself. Love it. I I never went to set. And I know it's bad. I should go visit set, but set's boring. They don't pay me to be on set. I hate New York. So like, I didn't have any set stories. The only story I could possibly write about was like the premiere, which was um, insane because I don't ever go to premieres. First of all, I didn't know that I was going to have to be on the red carpet. So I wore a hoodie and wide leg Adidas track pants. And at some point, somebody asked me like where my outfit was from. And I was like, farm and fleet. Like, are you, get the, get out of here. So I didn't know we were going to have to walk uh, the red carpet and meeting Anna Wintour was sitting behind us. And I'm like, she was sitting with Victor Garber and... Um, Uma Abedin and I was like what am I doing in this place right I'm like are you get out of here and then the after party was so great but so one of the one of the most amazing things about the after party was there were these like gorgeous models eight feet tall live beautiful silent models there's a French fry joke in one of the early episodes. So there were French fries at this party, but they were being carried around by these models who were holding umbrellas. And at the end of each umbrella was like a paper cone full of like piping hot French fries. And I was like, are all these models getting grease burns? <laughs> Maybe I could have written about that, but I feel like it's more fun to give myself a little runway to like write about the old thing. And then when it's over, write about what we were doing. I, I love the idea that the thinnest people ever who would probably never eat French fries are having to wear them as hats and walk around and be like, would you like something I never eat? How about you? You look like you eat something. This looks like something for you, not for me. You... I would be, it's I wild. Would be like, let me have the whole cone. This is mine yeah. now. You know who did eat me and my wife? <laughs> They're like, oh, these bitches are from the Midwest. Go over there with the mini cheeseburger. <laughs> we walked it. in, Kirsten had two full goblets of wine before we even like properly walked into the room. As and she was like, glug, glug, glug. it was like uh, Sarah Jessica's wine. And she was like, this is good. Glug, glug. I'm like, okay, all right. Act like we've been somewhere before. I know we haven't, but pretend. <laughs> Expensive coat, nice shoes, purse, French fries, and two bottle double fisting Sarah Jessica Parker's wine. That's yes. how you say, you know, you're classy. Yes. Yeah. I, she came up to me at some point in the night and was like, I need to meet Matthew Broderick. And I was like, okay, okay. Here's the thing. I worked on this show, but I didn't like to go up to Matthew Broderick work on this show. Like bitch, you're going to get me fucked up. So then I went over and I like talked to Sarah Jessica, who is the nicest person on the planet. I will tell you that she embraced me. I am a very large person and I tower over her and being held by her tiny bird hands. I was like, I feel like the fucking Michelin man and this tiny person is grabbing me. So like, she was like holding me and she's like, thank you for working on the show. And I'm like, what is her hand touching? Like, it, is she just holding on to my side roll? But then after our, our embrace broke apart, I was like, um, now that we're, we've been intimate, my <laughs> wife would really 
like to meet Matthew? And she was like, of course. And so she introduced, he was wearing an ascot. He looked unbelievable. Like tuck, he just looked unbelievable. And then um, I tapped him on the shoulder and I was like, hi, I'm Samantha. I work for your wife. And he's like, yes. <laughs> he's like, mm, yeah, you do. You're or whatever he said. And then I was like, and Kirsten's behind me like, <laughs> and me. <laughs> I was like, my wife would really love to say hi to you. And he says, of course. And then he embraced her and they talked for a few minutes. And I know the whole time she was thinking like, don't say Ferris Bueller, don't say Ferris Bueller, don't say Ferris Bueller. <laughs> I have the best Matthew Roderick story. I have so few. Every time you talk about fam of like famous people, I'm like, oh, famous frame. And then I was like, wait, I have a, so I, I, oh, more than a decade ago, I was doing this thing where I was like collecting pictures of of weird celebrities doing weird things so I had like Will Wheaton collating paper and like and I and I asked Nathan Philly and I was like can you hold a ball of twine and Nathan Philly was like no but he didn't say no um and so instead I was like I'm just gonna keep asking because I think this is funny he did not yeah. think it was funny um and it actually <laughs> it actually turned into something that was like not good where I was like okay and Simon hey, wait but can I just say about that story who Exactly. End of story. Okay. Um, he, I, he, think he, I think he was having a bad time. Um, so, so, but like, and then Simon Pegg was like, look, I'll hold, I'll hold twine. And then I got a, out of nowhere, I got an email from Matthew Broderick's, uh, like his assistant. And it was a picture of him. I think he was holding a spat, like an egg on a spatula. And I was like, are you fucking kidding me? He reads my blog. And it was the, it was the kindest thing. And now every time I see him, I just think that guy went out of his way to be like, you know what? I'm just going to make somebody happy. And every single time I, I see him in anything, I'm like, I love him. <sighs> oh my God. I have, kept, I have kept you four minutes over your thing. I'm the Oh no, we're person. just talking. I don't, we, did we even answer anyone's question? <laughs> I think we did too. Okay. How about, can we yeah, see? Well, let's do an, a, a, can you see what? Abe? <gasps> He's with his vacation mommy, but I have pictures of him on my phone. Let me find one. Yeah, we could do a few more questions unless they're like, would you bitches shut the fuck up and get out of here? Okay, Let's, let me. While you're looking for that, I'll ask you another question. Um, yes. My favorite book of yours is We're Never Meeting in Real Life. Would you say that you consider yourself an introvert? Okay, first, here's Abe. Is that, can you see that? With his dog cousin in the car going to the park that's my stepkids ghostly pale leg <laughs> little peep show um here's the thing I love to talk to people I'm good at it I don't get nervous in front of crowds but I do like my alone time um and i i sometimes feel ashamed i don't do much <laughs> with my alone time it's not productive like a lot of times it's just like staring but i do feel like i need to not talk sometimes so i don't i'm great at a party i'm you know, I can do it, but then I want to go home and go to bed. So that not a true introvert, uh, some like a hybrid. <laughs> but also, if I don't have to leave the house, I don't. That's what, the pandemic was good for me, except it. Oh, sorry. That sounds insane to say. I don't mean that. I mean, I took advantage of not having to go outside. But then it like broke my brain and made me afraid of people. 
which is why I have, I was a little late, everyone, because I was talking to my psychiatrist <laughs> and I was like, uh, I have to go early because I have an event. And she was like, well, your brain, <laughs> you need the full session. And I was like, you can't, you can't spare me the last 10 minutes. She's like, well, I don't want to. And I was like, are you about to put me in a 5150 hold? What's happened? What are, what are we doing? Can I click my computer screen? <laughs> she, she, I'm sure she sent me an email too. <laughs> we just need to follow up with this. Samantha, I'm very concerned and uh, we need to have a, a discussion. Oh my, Meanwhile, my psychiatrist is like, you know what? We, we do a 50 minute hour, right? And I need yes. five minutes to get ready for the next person. And also yeah. we can just do this in 15. So you're more interesting, I think is probably what it is. No, I refuse to believe that. Okay. Do you do therapy with your psychiatrist or just med checks? It's, it's mainly med check, but she has to go through my stuff to see if I'm faking. So she's like, cause everyone's like, no, I'm doing great. And then she's like, really? Let's talk about it. When's the last time you got, oh, if your you're problem? faking feeling better. Mm. Yes. Yeah. And I'm like, well, I mean, it's been a while. And she's like, when's the last time you ate a piece of fruit? And I'm like, literally, I have no idea. And she's like, you're not doing great. We need to set up therapy. I'm like, oh, oh. Cause, cause in my brain, I'm like, well, I think I'm okay. I'm semi-functional and I haven't hurt myself recently. And she's like, that's actually not good enough. We need to hope for more, you know? And I'm like, oh, all right. See, we do therapy, which is a fun way of torturing uh, my, <laughs> myself. And so, and like, I, I I don't know if I said this before people logged on or not, but I like nine months ago was diagnosed with OCD and the best therapy for that is exposure therapy. But because my um, hypervigilance and fears are around situations that are impossible to expose yourself to, we sort of, I have written them she she's like write the scariest situation you can ever imagine at the grocery store and then read it several times a day record yourself reading it uh then listen to it back like it, it's supposed to sort of like take the power away from the thing and it, it don't <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I was about, that would just give me more ammunition in my head. I would just be like, oh, and I, this also, this thing. We're doing this thing where I'm like, you know, I have like self-image, self-esteem problems. So she worked out this therapy of this, like these mirror exercises I have to do. And she was like, today, she was like, how's the mirror stuff going? And I was like, well, I know without even thinking, I was like, well, you know, sometimes I close my eyes when I do it. And she was just like, the point is for you to look. And I'm like, yeah, but you know, oh, it totally bums me out when I look at myself. And she was like, that'll be three hundred dollars please like you're fucking here. yeah you're still broken come back tomorrow yes yes oh my god well you know what you just you're you're using an inner self it's a self mirror you know just stand in front of a wall and just picture yourself and i don't know i wouldn't do that every time well, i look at myself I in the mirror like, i think i'm cross-eyed so i'm just like man when faced with a mirror I just am giving myself more things to, there's never going to be a day when I pull up in front of a full length mirror and I'm like, you're looking great. <laughs> I mean, okay. First of all, 100% same. Secondly, somebody recently was like, here's what you need to keep in mind is 20 years from now, you're going to be like, oh my God, I wish I looked like this. And I was like, so you're just saying it gets worse. 
I mean, right. this is yeah. The I don't need to it. chart the slow decline. Thank you. Exactly. Exactly. The other day, Victor was like, "What is this line here?" I was like, "A wrinkle." Uh, Victor's everybody. trying to get fucked up. And, but he was like, "But this one down here, people don't get wrinkles down here. You got all of them up here." And I was like, "Oh, divorce. <laughs> Bye." <laughs> I know you love them, but see, uh, he was just, I just thought maybe you, you, you cut yourself or I was like, no, this is just me. Falling no, you did not No, he didn't <laughs> tell Victor that he's on my shit list. <laughs> he knows what the fuck that was. Get he out of here. He absolutely knows. He absolutely, <sighs> that's yeah. Put that's his right. ass in the dog house tonight or wherever you keep the taxidermies. That's where he's sleeping tonight. Well, I have a, a six foot bear right here next to me. So good. Uh, Put the two of them in a room together. See who makes it out. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Oh my gosh. This was so much fun. Uh, please write another book. Dream of quickly. my life. Like, oh, well, you'll love this. So this book is like the first in a three book deal, which let me tell you I had to have my agent structure it so that like if I don't do the other two I don't get in trouble it's like I don't get the money but also if I decide never to write again it's okay but for the next book I think I don't think I've told anyone this yet I I some people will remember I have an old blog called bitches gotta eat and I took it offline so that I can steal from it. Love and it. I'm going to do a thing in this new book where I'm going to essentially analyze what I was like 10 years ago. So I'm going to put, put the blog pieces in a book, but like sort of like mystery science theater, you know, comment on them as current me so that's what I'm doing and my editor I saw her in New York and she was like you have 11 months to get this turned into me and I was like I'll start it in 10 and a half months (laughs) I love you I love you but here's the thing is you actually you actually will accomplish it Meanwhile, I am literally four years. Yeah, bitch, where is your book? I love you, Erin Daly. I just saw that pop up. (laughs) I love you so much. Thank you. So nice. Everyone loves you. Yeah, where is your next thing i don't i don't know i'm, I'm oh, working I love on the murder thing right now but i don't think it's gonna work because it's too short and you know if you do fiction you can do novellas but if you're doing true like true crime and it's really short what's that is there yeah. not a novella for that wait so- speaking of novels before we go i have to give you or your staff That's a me. compliment okay I signed up for, oh, I can't remember. You're going to get mad. I can't remember what it's called. Yes. The nowhere team. Yes, I do have. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. I don't know who picks those books. I do. Girl, they're so good. The Spite House. Oh, bitch. There have they have been they there's so much great for right now. As a matter of fact, this will this will probably get cut off. So um so so if anybody is part of the fantastic, I mean not fantastic strange, but nightmares from nowhere. Yeah, um, join I, so we can right, do yes. this together, everyone. But look, I'm I'm totally I'm totally gonna tell you, and I I'm probably not supposed to. Elizabeth's probably gonna pop up and go, why are you so bad at keeping secrets? But I just picked um July's book. Um, and I uh, haven't announced it yet, but it's Camp Damascus by Chuck Tingle. Have you read any of the Chuck Tingle books? The like gay porn? Yes. He's, He's writing mainstream, horror? Mainstream horror. It's still funny. It's still bizarro. Oh my God. But it's way more mainstream, but it is so good. And I'm so, oh my, I'm so excited. I cannot wait 
for you to read this. Oh <laughs> my it's God. about like queer gay conversion camp for oh. so good. Oh my God. You it's so guys, good. that's so exciting. I'm about to start because I you guys sent it and then I saw a write-up about it. Um oh my god, uh natural beauty. Oh yes, natural beauty. Wait, I've got that one right here that yes mm. oh it's so good very good body horror like if you it's a little gross but like oh my gosh oh. Like, uh everybody on this zoom does a little gross right <laughs> like they would not be watching you or me if they couldn't handle we're like the two most disgusting writer what? people <laughs> honestly we need to start a podcast of just gross stuff and we'll never run out of well but I will oh I'll forget is the problem I don't have a good enough memory for a, a podcast so we should do a three episode podcast where we only do three episodes and then we walk away hell yeah All I right. mean yeah. come on yeah. anytime I love it and I'm whenever your book this. is done we'll do this and yes. then I'll do and you'll do the music oh yes we'll do a musical podcast a musical horror podcast about puking and pooping oh my god this is gold someone write this down because I will 1000% forget it <laughs> at the end of the night you know there are how many people are on here there are a hundred people who just wrote that down they're still here 18 minutes late they're in I know. everyone are we wasting your time <laughs> Well, they would have logged off, right? They would have. They would have. I don't think. I don't think we lost a single person when it. That's came incredible. To the I love it. I love it. Oh I just have to give a, a special shout out to, um, to Elizabeth who is running this from her house because yes. she is uh is watching her kid do a musical about that's what the fox sings. What it? What was the song? That's what the fox says. What does the fox say? Shit, I don't know. Who are you asking? I don't I don't know. I don't I don't know old pop culture weird things. Um so so thank you, Elizabeth, for staying on the extra 20 minutes. And sorry, Elizabeth. Yeah, Elizabeth was like, shut the fuck up. I'm doing this is not my job and it's late. Get out. Like, I hear I'm you, Elizabeth. In. Yes. Well, so, Jenny, I love you. I, one day I will come to San Antonio. Please do come. And if we'll I could it. put out like a fall, but when is it not hot? Remember um, when I came to Austin, I almost fucking fainted. Uh, like, I mean, December and January are good. And even November is like. Ish, you don't okay. do book events in December. Come on. We'll do a special one just for you. For real, we'll do a spot. We'll do, we'll do like a, when, like a roundup. We'll be like in all. So Elizabeth said, no, we won't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How about this? You can come. Yeah, it's Christmas, you bitch. You're oh, not oh doing I forgot it. It's Christmas. Oh, my dumb shit. November. January. November. January. Yeah. New Let's year. Do. Old bitches. <laughs> yes. And you had a whole book about new year stuff. This is perfect. Okay. Yeah. We, oh favorite. my God, we're going to write like resolutions we should make, but won't. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll All come right. down there. I just refuse to sweat to death. So come it, on, global cooling. It's going to happen. It's going to happen eventually. <laughs> eventually, the sun is going to explode and then it'll get cold, I guess. I don't know how that works, but I'm sure that's incredible. It's going to happen. Wait right write that down be like and then she said the sun was going to explode so now i gotta worry about that fucking thing sorry sorry everyone we've traumatized <laughs> I love we'll it. do it again next time <laughs> exactly we'll do it again very soon all right this was jenny fun. i love you to the moon i love you too you're the best Mwah. see you and soon goodbye to everyone bye everybody <laughs> <laughs>